Hey everyone, it's Joel and Taylor in the morning. It's 3.25 in the okay. afternoon right now, All uh, right. actually. You're right, it's not Joel and Taylor in the morning. Sorry, buzzkill. Yeah, so, hey everybody, this is Joel at Metageek, and I'm here with... Uh, Taylor. <laughs> and we're going to do a, a quick video here where we're going to introduce you to Insider. And uh, look, I just clicked things. I did that last take, too. I need to stop doing that. Uh, we're going to introduce you to Insider 4, and Taylor's going to facilitate that by kind of uh, asking me questions and kind of you know pushing it along. So take it away, yeah, Taylor. Yeah, cool. So um, the number one thing that I think, um, at least what drew my eye to Insider the first time I opened it, is all of the kind of the graphs at the bottom. Yeah, and this is probably the coolest part about Insider. It's kind of what makes Insider really, really awesome, really, really unique. So I did it again. I'm clicking things. Um, so each one of these squares, each one of these shapes represents a wireless network that our, our wire, Wi-Fi card is picking up. So our wireless networking card is picking up each one of these wireless networks. And it shows us some information about that. It shows us what channel they're on. It shows us how wide they are and how they overlap with each other. And then the height of each one also tells us how loud they are, what their amplitude is. Okay, cool. And so um, can you show me how to narrow it down? So. There's just a ton there. Yeah, it's basically. kind of it's really overwhelming, especially here at MetaGeek. There's just a lot of wireless networks nearby from all the other businesses, and, and of course, you know, MetaGeek because we're ner we're geeks here. Yeah. So if you want to find a specific one, like you know, we can search for MetaGeek, and I can apply a filter based on that. So now we've filtered out all of the networks that are called MetaGeek, MetaGeek Lab, MetaGeek Lab DevOps. Anything with the name MetaGeek is, is now listed here, and that's a great way we can kind of you can kind of narrow down and find what you're looking for. Cool. So um, I noticed up by the filter bar where you type that in, um, what what are radio and ESSID? What's what's that all about? So Insider 4 groups SSIDs or networks in two different ways. And so let's start out with radio. So I'm going to click on radio first, and, and let's group these by radio. So first, I should probably explain what an SSID is. An SSID is a service set identifier. Basically, it's just the name of a wireless network. Like if your network is named MetaNerd, like this Who's guy. Who's MetaNerd? I don't know. It's not, it's not somebody at MetaGeek. I've been look, looking for this guy. I think it's somebody nearby that saw the MetaGeek access points everywhere and, like, and, and just want to make some fun. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> so what this is doing is it's, it's grouping them by radio. And what I mean by that is grouping them by access points. So you might see in like a hospital or something like that, a corporate Wi-Fi environment where we've got um, multiple SSIDs on the same access point. Those are called virtual SSIDs. So MetaGeek Lab, MetaGeek Lab DevOps, MetaGeek Lab Guest, those are all on one physical access point. They're all on the same access the, point together. The one over there on the shelf. Yeah, yeah. We've got a bunch of access points here in, here, uh, in the room with us. So I've kind of got a little lab set up over there. And, and so, yeah, that's what these are. These are some access points over in my lab, hence the, you know, cool. you know, the name. So um, what happens if you select it? So to get more details about this group, this, this radio or this group of SSIDs, I can click on it. And that's going to open up this pane here. And this pane uh, gives us a bunch of additional information. So first off, over here, we've got all the different SSIDs that are on this radio. We've got um, one that's not broadcasting. That's a, a hidden SSID, MetaGeek Lab, MetaGeek Lab DevOps, MetaGeek Lab Guest. We can see their security types, their MAC addresses. And then we also over here, we get a whole bunch of details about this particular access point. So there's one thing I want to point out really quick here, and it's, there's kind of a coloring scheme for Insider. We've got blue. Blue is anything that we currently have selected. So it's blue here. Here's the MAC address of the selected radio group. Um, and we've got this blue section here that tells us all about our access point. And then down and then here. blue down there. Yeah, that's, what we that's the access point that we currently have selected. And then there's, let's talk about yellow next. Okay. Now, you know that in 2.4 gigahertz in Wi-Fi in general, networks can share a channel or they can partially overlap. The yellow networks are the ones that are sharing a channel with our network. Now, what happens when we share channels? We take turns talking? Very politely. Very politely. Mm, quite. So, we're politely taking turns talking, but then there's another type of, there's an, a, another way that a network can, can um, kind of be on the same channel. That's partially overlapping. See these red networks? What does here? that mean? Well, that means that whenever they try to so talk, you're, they, you're trying to tell me is that they always talk at the same time and, and they can never hear each other. So, right, okay. so when two networks are on the same channel, they politely take turns talking, but when they partially overlap, they just talk over each other and it's very inefficient. It doesn't work well. We want to avoid that as much as possible. So we color those red. So we can see how many networks are partially overlapping and we can see how many networks are sharing the channel with us. Okay. Um, who is now... Now, who is, is the strongest overlapping? <laughs> the strongest overlapping looks like it's uh, Rich. Rich. He should know better. He works at a Wi-Fi company. Yeah, you'd think that he wouldn't be on Channel 3. Yeah, he needs to get with the program and figure it out. Come on, Rich. 
So um, kind of on that note of coloring too, you may notice the signal strength over time graph. This kind of shows us what's how good the signal strength is over time. Hence, you know, the name. Right. Uh, <laughs> the blue line is which... It's us. It's us. That's the one we have selected right now. Um, and the yellow line is the loudest co-channel, the loudest one's on the same channel. You know, he's going to take politely take right. turns talking. And then the red line is the loudest one that's on an, an overlapping channel. And it makes sense that that would be rich. Uh, yes, that would be rich. He's kind of loud like that, isn't he? He yeah. likes to talk when I... Yeah, that's it's true. his biggest pet peeve sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's like his access point. It, it's, that is his biggest pet peeve, but then he does it. It's like yep. his access point embodies his personality. <laughs> nice. I hope he doesn't listen to this. I, yeah, maybe. He might. <laughs> <laughs> so another thing that's really cool about this software is I actually want to check out another network to do this. Let's go find a network called DMG. Okay. It's just I know this guy is here. Um, so notice what channel he's on. He's on channel also on channel three. He is also on channel three. He's on the same channel as Rich. Um, now we now we all know that the three non-overlapping channels are, are one, six, and eleven. Yes, one, six, and eleven. Um, so anybody that's working with Wi-Fi, that's that's a rule that you will learn and keep in there. So this guy's on a non-standard channel, and if, when we get rid of the filter, uh, and oh, I lost him. Hang on a second. DMG enter. Let me. I, I didn't actually select him, so now I have him selected. How many networks is he partially? Whoa, 17. He is oh, partially overlapping with 17 other networks. In fact, look at that. From where we're sitting, those partially overlapping networks are way louder than this guy. That's yeah. bad. So what if we were this guy? Maybe this is like a home user, you know? Could be. It could, you know, but let's say that, you know, it's not. But let's say this was a home user. And he wanted to just pick a better channel for his wireless network. Well, the fastest way to do that is to look at the recommended channel up here. That's pretty cool. Yeah, he's on channel three, and Insider just tells him, tells you. It figures out. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't have to really know anything about you Wi-Fi? No, <laughs> you, can, you can be like absolute beginner, know nothing about Wi-Fi, and you just look at your recommended channel, and you go, oh, cool, I need to be on channel one. You go to your router's configuration, and you're good. Cool. Okay, so um, do you have further questions for me about this? Not about that. How about we check out the ESSID button okay, up there? Okay, great. So I'll hit the X there to close that, and let's click on ESSID. Now, earlier we talked about what an SSID. An SSID is a name of wireless network. Right. Well, an ESSID is an extended service set. That's when we have multiple access points that all have the same name. So like, how many access points do we have here at MetaGeek? I don't know, like 10 or something? Something like that. We've got a bunch. So what I'm going to do is let's just filter out MetaGeek again with the awesome filtering bar. And so when we filter that out, let's select MetaGeek now. So I click on him. And so what this is, is, is what we're doing now is we're grouping all of the access points that have the same SSID together. Okay. So each one of these is an individual access point uh, with the same SSID. So check out what happens down here. Remember, we have this selected with blue. Right. What, what's happened down here? Oh, and so now every one that's a member of that ESSID is blue in the graphs. Yep, yep. And then the yellow ones are... are the ones that share the channels. And with the red those, ones are... The ones that overlap. Like Rich and MyQuest and McMillan and all these guys down here. Um, also notice the signal strength over time graph. Um, check out these color swatches over here. You can actually tell which is which, which is which in the signal strength over time graph. So you could like walk around and make sure that at least one of these is over like the negative seventy dBm line. That would be a good signal strength. Kind of kind of a rule of thumb to try to be over negative seventy. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a it's kind of a way to make sure that you have decent coverage. Now, there's another thing I didn't point this out earlier, and this is present in radio grouping as well. Notice the color swatches out here too. Oh, they correspond to share or overlap. Yeah. So you know, BOM. Um, he is uh, he's on the same channel, but Hal Davis. Overlap on an overlap, so that's that's really bad. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, what ESSID grouping is, and it's really awesome because you can just click on your network, and boom, you have everything selected immediately. Um, also, the gray ones; these are ones that um, just are not a part. Yeah. They're not overlapping. They're, they're not on the same channel. We don't have just kind of there. And one more thing you can do is if you want, let's say that this guy right here, uh, this MAC address. Let's say you want to know where he is. You can actually just click on him. And see what happened. He turned white. Oh, all it's right. White up here. It's white down here. So you know, blue is all the ones we have selected. But then when we, I don't know, select select one, he turns white. So basically, as long as you can match colors and understand numbers, you can make your Wi-Fi. A little yeah, bit better. actually, you can. <laughs> if, if you watch Sesame Street, you can you can troubleshoot your wireless network with this tool. So yeah, hopefully, it's really really. Um, really, really easy um, to do that with. Awesome. So yeah, that pretty much, I think, covers it. Cool. Can I show you my two favorite things? OK. All right. Uh, since I, we're almost out of time, but let's just do that really fast. So I'm going to find, um, actually, let's just look at McMillan, because he's right here. So um, so let's. my two favorite things about Insider. My first favorite thing is that if you select radio grouping and you select your network, 
you, you know what channel you need to be on. Yeah. This guy's on channel 10. He should be on channel 1. That's the best channel from where we're sitting right now. And it just came up with that instantly. Instantly. You don't have to know anything. You can just pick your network and boom. You know what channel you need to put your wireless network on. It's awesome for a home user. Super, super cool totally. for a home user. And then my favorite thing for the enterprise user is the ESSID grouping. Uh, MetaGeek Lab, I can just click on them and there are all my networks that have MetaGeek Lab or that are MetaGeek Lab really, really fast if you're an enterprise network administrator. So this tool is awesome for the home user and for the enterprise user. Yeah, and now we just need to get Rich to use it so he'll move his network I know, over. right? Again, he works at a Wi-Fi company. He gets this tool for free, and he's not... And he, he still has, can't pick the right channel. Yeah, he got this tool for free. So, oh, man. Yeah. Well, everybody, thanks for joining us for this introduction video for, uh, for Insider 4. Um, this tool is available on Mac and Windows and Android. In fact, if you buy a license for... The Mac and Windows license are one. So if you buy it for Windows or Mac, then you can actually activate it on both. And then you can get the Android version, which has almost every single feature that you saw here on Google Play. Uh, and if you have any further questions about Insider 4, be sure to check out our knowledge base and our community at support.metageek.net. Thanks a lot, right. guys. Thanks. Thanks.